Chapman coke enter the furnace next to the electrode and almost immediately become red hot. This is at the very top of the furnace. And further down, the charge becomes first incandescent, then it melts, and the carbon of the coke combines with the calcium of the lime to form the calcium carbide. The electrodes themselves are consumed in this inferno, created by over a quarter of a million amperes of 200 volt current. The massive bus bars carry 90,000 amperes to each electrode, enough current to supply a thousand homes. And the entire electric consumption would supply a city the size of Columbus, Ohio, or San Antonio, Texas. Tons of water cool the electrical connections and holder rings at the electrodes in a complex system which, like the entire plant, is under constant control by an elaborate system of instruments which adjust, indicate, and record the performance and behavior of every part of the manufacturing process. The flow sheet is the only way the whole thing can be seen at once. The accurately proportioned charge is carried to the top of the plant on a bucket conveyor mixed by vibration and fed to the furnace at the top. At the bottom, molten calcium carbide is tapped into a continuous belt of ingot mold conveyors, which take it back to the top of the plant again. The inferno of the tapping floor is an unforgettable sight, full of fire and dazzling light, as the tapping crew with the big electric stinger keeps the white hot carbide flowing. The hearth and shell of these huge furnaces rotate slowly on massive underground wheels, periodically bringing a different tap hole into working position. Then the stinger is moved over on its trolley, and the new hole opened up to maintain continuous production. Pouring into the ingot molds of the carbide conveyor system at a rate of more than 200 tons per day, the molten calcium carbide moves away from the furnace at a constant rate. At the edge of the tapping floor, the conveyor turns vertical, carrying its load upward. The cycle never stops. Molten carbide flows day and night into the ingot molds, and here, as it starts to cool, we can see our product, calcium carbide, for the first time. This ingot conveyor is driven by huge sprockets as tall as a man with mighty teeth each the size of your fist. Even a few feet from the tap hole, the carbide has begun to cool, and it will cool still further in its 80-foot vertical trip to the highest level of the plant. Here it turns another corner to travel horizontally again back to the center of the plant, where the still hot ingots are dumped unceremoniously into the chutes that lead to the crusher, and the empty ingot molds continue their endless trip back to the furnace. Driven by mighty motors, equipped with massive spinning flywheels, the crushers reduce the finished carbide to useful size quickly and uniformly, and the production job is pretty well finished. Lime and coke have come into the plant through automatic conveying and weighing equipment. The lime and coke have been tested, proportioned, and fed into the furnace, where vast amounts of electrical energy create the calcium carbide. From the tapping floor, ingot mold conveyors carry the product across and up and dump it into the crusher system. Now it goes on, still on automatic conveyors, to a water-cooled rotary drum where the last heat is extracted, and it continues on out of the plant to storage, shipment, or the acetylene generators. The crushed, cooled carbide leaves the plant on vibrator conveyors, protected from moisture and weather. They run through the plant yard, either to the storage and shipping center, or to the acetylene plant, carrying a continuous stream of the finest quality calcium carbide. And the quality of the carbide is never left to chance. Samples are taken frequently right in the midst of tapping, and almost before they've cooled, they arrive at the gas yield test house. 
After crushing, each specimen is accurately weighed and goes into a small scale acetylene generator, specially designed and built to test gas yield accurately. After careful checking of the adjustment of the test unit, the specimen is brought into contact with water and an accurate measurement made of the acetylene it yields. The standard that prevails here is high. A critical eye is kept on every step of production and no test is more carefully watched than this. Meantime, the sizing of screened calcium carbide is checked with a set of standard test screens in the laboratory to prove out the accuracy of sizes in random samples taken on the line during actual production packing operations. In another stage of this unending quality control, the amount of dust controlling oil applied to the carbide is checked by distilling a carbon tetrachloride wash from a measured quantity of product. So we're always sure of effective dust control without excessive oil. These tests and many others are part and parcel of National Carbide's unremitting insistence on product quality and product uniformity at every point. Testing begins with raw materials and never ends until approved top quality calcium carbide is packed for shipment. Each station in the packing department feeds an individual size of crushed, screened and treated carbide into the familiar and famous bright red drums, which are vibration packed to assure full measure and solid filling. This is the end product of all our efforts and the constant quality control assures the user that National Carbide will be top quality, accurately sized, consistent and uniform in gas yield, thrifty and efficient in use. It is packed in a wide variety of accurately graded sizes from dust to lump and in every size for whatever purpose it is to be used, the National Carbide in these red drums will do the job expected of it. The wide choice of carbide sizes is matched by choice of container sizes from the two pound can through the 10 pound can, the 25 pound drum, the 100 pound drum, and reusable barrels from 250 to 600 pounds. There is a size for every purpose and even bigger in five ton hopper units. or special designed hopper cars. And most of the calcium carbide goes to large or small acetylene generators where it is made to yield economical, high purity acetylene. Like all generators, this big one for pipeline gas reveals next to nothing about its inner workings. But in a laboratory setup, we can see the principle of operation. Here we have a vessel containing calcium carbide and a means of adding water, which starts the reaction immediately, producing hydrated lime and acetylene. About 1905, a generator just about that simple was an important part of the last word in automobiles. For acetylene fueled the headlights on such glamour cars as this. And while the ladies serenely watch and smile, the proud possessor of this chariot must pause in his journey and fill his acetylene generator with calcium carbide. Then another stop. Turn the valves, open the brass bound acetylene light, apply the match, and he has light, the best available at the time, to guide him through the shadows safely home. But a flame of acetylene and pure oxygen is more familiar today. Whether it's used for welding, where for many jobs it's unsurpassed, or for hardening the surfaces of steel parts, or to perform staggering feats of burning through mighty chunks of heavy scrap, or to slice with precision through forgings and plates and produce accurate finished parts, this acetylene flame is a proven servant of industry. Recently, calcium carbide itself has become an industrial tool for refining cast iron. A special grade of calcium carbide is loaded in this simple injection equipment. And as soon as the ladle of iron is full, the injection feeder is placed over the top. Nitrogen gas carries the carbide into the molten metal, where its peculiar affinity for sulfur 
makes it serve as the most efficient method yet of removing that element as an embrittling and weakening impurity in the iron. At the same time it desulfurizes so effectively, the carbide further upgrades the metal in other ways. So the finished castings from a foundry using this process are the highest quality the industry has yet produced. Yes, this calcium carbide is a remarkable material. Man-made itself from lime and coke to produce the new molecule of calcium carbide, it yields when slaked with water that hungry, grasping acetylene molecule, the base for dozens of man-made materials. Here, for instance, it becomes what is known as a monomer, a molecule which links in chains to form a polymer, which here is the base for vinyl plastics. As Coraseal and Gion, vinyl plastics have a multitude of technical uses. Dimensional stability for a slide rule, heat forming and sealing for transparent packaging of precision parts in a bath of oil. They provide durable gloves to protect the hands of industry or the softer hands of the housewife. A smooth, durable clothesline. A float to carry a fish net or a colorful floating fish for a baby's bath. A snug jacket for a baby's bottle. An insulated bag to keep big folks' bottles cooler. Or a tub to keep the ice from melting. Place mats and coasters, colorful, easy to clean. Gion records, shatterproof and high fidelity. A royal flush of Coraseal and Gion products. But this is only a random sampling of the wonders put in the world with this acetylene-based plastic. That same acetylene molecule in a different metamorphosis becomes the base for neoprene, the versatile chemical rubber. This man-made rubber is a versatile material resistant to oil, grease, oxygen, and sunlight, adaptable to a great variety of technical uses gaskets, timing belts, jackets for electrical wiring and demanding service. Neoprene makes hoses that can withstand the withering effects of oxygen or last almost without limit for such service as gasoline and fuel oil pumps. At home, it provides a lasting solution to the everlasting faucet washer problem and comfort and convenience for the housewife in such products as a foot easing floor mat or hand saving gloves. Footwear is one of the most demanding uses of neoprene, whether combined with other materials or used alone. Utility footwear of almost every kind benefits from neoprene. And with this specially designed Trivac sole, maximum traction and durability result. For footwear or a thousand other products, neoprene is the real tough guy of the rubber industry. Acetylene is also the base for many drugs and medicines, like the one this young lady is about to meet in the dentist's chair. Trimar Pharmaceutical Trichloroethylene is a dental analgesic, a valuable modern means of raising the patient's threshold of pain either without or in conjunction with an anesthetic. Manufactured by acetylene chemistry, it offers new ease to dentist and patient. Wonderful? Yes, it is. Like many other acetylene-based synthetics we have today, but none is more wonderful than the miracle of fusing two commonplace substances, lime and coke, in the fury of the electric furnace to produce the most uncommon pebbles of calcium carbide itself. And while all calcium carbide looks alike, the carbide that carries the national trademark remains unsurpassed for quality and uniformity wherever it is used.